if we can't uh, find the right environment or policy environment to support that type of or a SAF investment and renewable fuel investment here in Canada, the risk is we just won't we won't see it done here. Uh, companies have a lot of options in terms of where they want to invest, and we will be left with just uh, sending our feedstock, which everyone else is looking at because of uh, the sustainable and the amount of sustainable feedstock that we have letting that feedstock go elsewhere to be produced in the higher value product and having to buy it at an inflated cost. Aviation has uh, particular uh, problems. We're a hard to decarbonize sector. And that means that we don't have a lot of options. If we want significant uh, emissions to occur, the only solution for us is to use um, a sustainable aviation fuel. And we'll call it SAF for short. We need a, a supporting policy environment, which uh, we, we currently really don't have today in Canada. And that's, that's the next thing that we need to really work on to ensure we have a regulatory framework uh, that can support investment in SAF and growing it and scaling in the future so we can help decarbonize the sector further. Really, when you look at the, the policy environment that's in place today, really is is there to address the ground transportation emissions and the trick is aviation needs to find a place within uh, that that policy environment the second piece to this is that sustainable aviation fuels is actually more expensive to make than some of the other renewable products and that means that uh, again, we need some form of policy that helps address some of the cost disadvantage that SAF has over other renewable products. If we want to see SAF in the next decade, we need to ensure that the $10 billion worth of renewable fuel facilities that are on the books today waiting for a signal from the government, those move forward. And we need to ensure that there, there's a signal given at the same time to ensure that those facilities invest in the SAF equipment. So we would call on government today to ensure that there's a clear actions and a strategy to set the foundation for SAF investment in Canada. One of the challenges that Canada is seeing today for producing SAF is other countries putting in production or other type of incentives that are making the SAF and renewable fuels investment climate uh, not very competitive. Our neighbor to the south has uh, put in place an industrial strategy that really is meant to stimulate the production of SAF going into the 2030s. The U.S. has launched a SAF Grand Challenge, which has put in place a target of producing 3 billion gallons of SAF by 2030 and replacing 100% of their jet fuel use in 2050 with uh, the use of a sustainable aviation fuel. And they have chosen an approach which is based on an industrial strategy supporting the production of SAF. And they've done a few things that are very helpful for SAF production, namely putting in place an incentive package that is higher than renewable diesel. So that makes up for the opportunity costs that we're seeing for suppliers to make SAF over, over renewable diesel. Of course, they have a whole government approach and they've acknowledged that aviation is important for the way that they do and, and that their economy flows. So it's embedded in a strategy to ensure that sector of the economy is decarbonized. So definitely this is a, this is a challenge for Canada because if we can't find the right environment or policy environment to support that type of or a SAF investment and renewable fuel investment here in Canada, the risk is we just won't, we won't see it done here. Uh, companies have a lot of options in terms of where they want to invest. And we will be left with just sending our feedstock, which everyone else is looking at because of uh, the sustainable and the amount of sustainable feedstock that we have, letting that feedstock go elsewhere to be produced in the higher value product and having to buy it at an inflated cost.